This will be the only problem for the frames of reference unit. And for this problem, you'll be expected to solve a, a physics problem using your understanding of inertial frames of references. So in this example, imagine that you and a friend are playing on a really long train car. And train cars have always been kind of the traditional example for frames of reference ever since Albert Einstein first started describing frames of reference problems using trains. And in this specific case, the train car is 440 feet long. And you and your friend have a really long, have a really fast model car. You can go 10 feet per second. And you're going to drive it to your friend in time how long it takes to get to him. However, before you can do anything, the train starts driving along at 100 feet per second. Now, an observer standing on the rails sees you. And to he, from his point of view, the car is going 110 feet per second. And he says that because of that, it should reach your friend in four seconds. Is he right? And if he's not right, why is he wrong? So take a few seconds, pause the video, figure out what's going on and why it's going to take a certain amount of time to reach your friend, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so for this problem, you need to look at both frames of references. From the observer's frame of reference, the car is going 110 feet per second. It's original 100 feet per second, plus the 10 additional feet per second that is going because of its driving. So all you're doing is you're adding together the two velocities. Now from your point of view, it's only going 10 feet per second. Now the observer's wrong in concluding that it's going to take 4 seconds. And the reason is very simple. If it drives 110 feet in the first second, it'll get to your friend. Except in that first second, your friend's also going 100 feet per second. Because remember, from the observer's point of view, everything in this frame of reference is going 100 feet per second and only the observer is stationary. And then what this means is, in the first second, the car will travel 110 feet, but your friend will travel 100. The car will only catch up 10 feet, and it'll catch up 10 feet in the next second, and so on and so forth. And it'll take 44 seconds for it to travel to 440 feet. That's 440 feet divided by 10 feet per second. And the mistake the observer made is he forgot to take into account the velocities of everyone in the frame of reference. He did the math right for the little car. The little car is going 10 feet per second plus 100 feet per second. But you and your friend aren't actually stationary from his point of view. From his point of view, you're going 0 feet per second plus 100 feet per second. So as a result, you and your friend are both perceived as going 100 feet per second. And now the reason we can do all this math really simply and just add together like velocities is because it's an inertial frame of reference. The train's going at a constant speed. If we tried to do this while the train was speeding up, we would have ended up with a lot of confusion and made some big mistakes. So as a result, it's very important. If you want to do math like this, if you want to add velocity 1 and velocity 2 together to get the final velocity, velocity final, then you have to make sure that acceleration is zero. And the reason this is because let's say we thought about the train as it accelerated. If we did it that way, there's a good chance that the little car might actually have driven backwards. The same way a marble will roll backwards if you pull a piece of cardboard out from under it. That is, the train accelerates in this direction, the little car might accelerate this direction, at least until its motors caught up and brought it back to speed. So as a result, you always have to be very careful in frame of reference problems. Make sure there's no acceleration to start with and then make sure you're taking into account the frame of reference and how it affects all objects, even stationary ones. And the reason that even stationary things move in this frame of reference is because in this frame of reference, there is no such thing as stationary. Because no matter how hard you think about it, it's very hard to pick a stationary point. Is the ground stationary? Is the earth stationary? Is the sun stationary? That every time you pick a new thing that you think might be stationary, there's always something else that's moving relative to it that seems like a better candidate. And as a result, physics can get very tricky, especially on the very high levels. But for now, it's good enough that we just pick something to be stationary and stick with it, and then do all of our calculations with respect to that one stationary observer.